Hey everybody, John here, and welcome back to the series, How to Use Citrus. This is video three, and in this video, we're gonna be discussing the operator tabs. So essentially for this video, we're just gonna be talking about this rectangle area here. We're gonna dive into the envelopes and the articulators in later videos. So also look forward to that. There's a lot to them, so I, that's why I decided to keep them a little bit separate. So in the top here, you're gonna see a preview of your waveform also called the shape preview window. So a little fancy thing right there. And you're gonna have three buttons on the bottom here. Now, looking at this wave, it goes up and then it comes down and it goes back up and completes one cycle. When we activate this button here, it's gonna chop it right here in the center at that zero crossing and only use this portion. So we hit this and that's the only part of that wave that this is gonna use. So it sounds, here's just a regular sine wave. We click this on and it sounds a little different. And we can also see it here on our scope as well. So this is the sine wave, and then we click this, and we can see it's only using that top portion. So this one is called half, essentially, because it uses half, and this next one is called even, and each odd phase will be silenced, resulting in this type of sound. So it almost sounds a little bit like a square wave. And this next one here is going to be absolute, and the sh uh, what is it? The shape values will be above the line. So essentially, it takes this bottom portion, flips it, and sends it right at the top, and we get that. So that's what these here little buttons do. Next, we're going to be moving on to these controls here, and this is kind of where you can shape your your waveform if you're not really wanting to dig too much into the harmonic editor. But, so these are some really cool controls here. So this first one is going to be the shape, or the SH here. And it basically morphs the waveform from the sine wave to the triangle wave to the saw wave. Then you get a square wave and also a pulse wave. So it's actually a really handy slider to go through the basic waveforms and kind of just, it's really easy to click what you want. So if you're making the bass, for example, you start sometimes with generally with a sine wave or maybe a square wave. Who knows what you want to do? Let's say you want to go to a triangle wave. You just drag this up here, and at 25% up there, it goes into a triangle wave. And let's keep going further here, and at 50, it turns into a saw wave going down. And then 75 is a square wave, and then here, it be becomes a pulse wave, and you can kind of adjust how much of that you want there from the 75% mark to the 100. So you get your sine wave, 25%, and it kind of snaps a little bit too. It's going to be your triangle wave, and this is what we can see it over here. We slide it up here to our saw wave, and then our square wave. Square wave, that was a little bit louder than I expected. And then here, we have that pulse wave right there. So this is generally a very handy slider tool to kind of pick your basic shapes. And then you can kind of go in between them a little bit too. You don't have to do the exact 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. So, and the next up we have the tension, and this essentially sets the distortion or the tension that that amount to the waveform. So we have this regular sign, and we're increasing this tension, and you can see the effects take place down here as well. And also on the spectrum view there at the top, you can see it adding all those extra har harmonics up there. So that's a cool one to play with as well. Next you got the skew. And basically, just like it says, it skews the waveform. And this is handy, too, uh, if you're looking to make any type of stringed instruments or stuff like that. That's a cool little uh, slider to help you out, make it sound a little bit better. The skew. So next up on the list, we have the sign shaper. So this applies a transform. And this is also pretty cool for bells as well. Uh, if you see, the, we have a sine wave here, and we turn this up here. It kind of inverts it a little bit and like puts it in the center so it kind of sounds like that one thing too before i go into these last two if you right click this uh this preview you can just select the actual waveforms a lot quicker than having to use the slider but you can also convert shape to sign harmonics, and this will bring up the harmonic editor, which we're going to go through later, but just something to think about. Next up, we have FL. 
this is a pre-filter and it'll apply a low pass kind of a smoothing type of filter which will prevent aliasing artifacts but you're going to lose some brightness of that so that's what that does this next one here is going to be the noise so it's a clean signal here let's bring this back down to a sign and then the more we play this the more we hear that noise uh, getting louder. And if it's all the way at the top, there's gonna be no signal in the oscillator. You won't hear this single tone anymore, but you're just gonna hear that white noise. So this also can be useful for this next section, especially this pluck right here. Because by adding this white noise, you're gonna have a lot of harmonics in that waveform. And then using this pluck is gonna sound like a nice dampening to that sound. So it's very useful and stuff like that. So just by two sliders, it almost sounds like a plucked stringed instrument. Turn that, you have a sign, turn the noise up, turn the pluck on, and we're actually pretty close. So that's a cool little neat trick there as well. So this center right here, if you notice that your waveform is kind of not is ex exactly centered as it should be within the, in your scope. So if you see here, we play the sine wave, it's basically oscillating pretty nicely in the center but sometimes it'll be a little bit higher or a little bit lower and if that happens you can always click center center and it'll help bring that back to the center d-click is useful if you have an envelope with a sharp attack and it starts clicking because it's trying to get to its lap its peak loudness too fast so if you select the d-click it'll put a little smoothing fade in filter and remove that click band limit uh, says it in the name band limit pretty self-explanatory uh, next up we have, so this section especially can be confusing, uh, if you haven't seen ratios before. So you have your operator and you want to go up an octave, down an octave, or you want to change the pitch of this oscillator, but in here operator. So you look at this here and 2.00, it kind of, you're like, what, what does this mean? So this first area here is going to be in ratios. So Let's say our fundamental is going to be a, a C sharp, for example, and we want to jump an octave. The way to do that here is to take this value and multiply it. So four. Okay, we're up an octave. So now we want to go up another one. So you multiply this by eight, or not by eight, but like you keep doubling the frequency here. So two, up an octave is four, and then double it, eight, and then next again, you guessed it, 16. So that's how you're going to do the different octaves. So default, we're back at two, but let's say you want to drop it down an octave. You divide it, boom, there's one. You want to go down another octave, you take this up to five. And then go down again. Just a little bit of math. At first, it's a little bit, a bit confusing. It's kind of strange to work that way, but you get used to it pretty quick. I mean, two, four, six, eight, sixteen. Then you go down one. 0 0.5, 0 0.250, it's, it, it becomes second nature after you keep using that for a while. And it's cool too because this, you can use these little ones here as a little bit of a detune to those as well. So it doesn't have to be exactly on the dot. Now you can also use this in, uh, in Hertz as well if you want to set a specific amount. So you can almost kind of think of it like a signal generator and you can pick your exact amount of Hertz. But as you can see me scrolling up, it only goes up to 999.999, so essentially 10K which is not that much stuff that's that crucial for this, I guess, up there, but it would be kind of cool if it went up to 20K. Uh, maybe, I don't know if that's possible or not, but one thing that is a little bit annoying, and if somebody else knows this, but it would be cool if there's a reset maybe. Oh, how about that? Alt did it. Alt saved the day. Sometimes I've been sitting here scrolling for a while. I'm like, oh my God, I need to get back to zero. And then look at that. We learn something new every day. So this is all zeroed out. You can also use this for FM synthesis, which is cool. We're going to get into that in the later video, but it's a lot of fun. So we basically covered this section here for the ratios. Now down here to the phase. So this is going to set the, the phase of this oscillator as it says phase. So we have the sine wave going. It might be kind of a little bit difficult to tell on the oscilloscope itself, but... Essentially, this is going to change your starting phase of that waveform. And then, let's see, next up, we got this global button here. So this is going to sync the phase of the operator in all the voices for that operator. So if you want that to happen, 
turn on that global right there. Next, you got the volume. So this is going to be the volume of this individual oscillator itself. So all the way up, we hear it. And then now it's gone. So, and it is a bipolar switch, by the way. By, by the way. So keep that in mind. Next, we have the pitch envelope, pitch envelope knob, PE knob. Now, this is going to set the range of the pitch articulate, the pitch articulator uses, and it's a default uh, 12 semitones or 1,200 cents. So one octave essentially. And then a pretty cool tip, uh, if you guys don't know this, let's say you have all your settings kind of dialed in for this operator and you want to do the same thing for operator two. So you can select this operator, click this little drag down and then copy the oscillator settings and then paste these over to the next one. So saves you a little bit of time there. Um, it's a pretty handy tool to use. So yeah, hopefully this section here is a little bit demystified if it was mystified. And then in the next section, we're going to go into the articulation section. So like this pan, volume, mod, pitch, and all that stuff and, and what those tabs mean. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this video is starting to help you out with Citrus. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video.